First, let's prepare the machine for use. Insert the power cord plug into the jack on the right side of the machine. Insert the power supply plug into a wall outlet. The sewing lamp and display comes on when the power is turned on. Now let's take a look at how to wind the bobbin and set the lower thread. Use only bobbins that have been designed for this sewing machine. Using other bobbins may cause injury or damage to the machine. Press the spool pin lever down and remove the spool cap. Fully insert the spool of thread for the bobbin onto the spool pin so that the thread unwinds to the front at the bottom and slide the spool cap onto the spool pin as far as possible. Hold the thread from the spool with both hands and pass the thread under the thread guide. Then pass the thread under the thread guide cover from the back to the front. Pass the thread under the hook of the bobbin winding thread guide and then wind the thread counterclockwise between the pretension discs, pulling it in as far as possible. Then place the bobbin on the bobbin winder shaft so that the spring on the shaft fits into the notch of the bobbin. Slide the bobbin winder shaft to the right until it clicks. Pull the thread from between the pretension discs to the right, wind it clockwise around the bobbin several times, and pass it through the slit in the bobbin winder seat to cut the free end of the thread. Slide the sewing speed controller to the right. Turn on the power and press the start stop button once to start winding the bobbin. If you use the foot controller, insert the foot controller plug into its jack on the rear side of the sewing machine. Slide the sewing speed controller to the right. Then turn on the power and wind the thread by pressing the foot controller down completely. When the bobbin becomes full, it begins to turn slowly. Press the start stop button to stop the machine. Cut the thread with a pair of scissors. Slide the bobbin winder shaft to the left and remove the bobbin. Slide the sewing speed controller back to its original position. Before setting the lower thread, Press the needle position button once or twice to raise the needle, raise the presser foot, and turn the power off. Slide the button on the right of the bobbin cover and remove the cover. Insert the bobbin with your right hand while holding the end of the thread with your left hand so that the thread comes out from the left side. Hold the bobbin lightly and make sure that the bobbin turns counterclockwise when you pull the thread. Guide the thread through the slit with your left hand and pull and cut the free end of the thread with the cutter. Make sure that the thread is correctly inserted through the tension-adjusting spring of the bobbin case. Replace the bobbin cover. Now you have completed the setting of the lower thread. Now let's take a look at how to pass the upper thread. 
turn on the power and raise the presser foot lever. Press the needle position button once or twice to raise the needle and turn the power off. Press the spool pin lever down and remove the spool cap. Fully insert the spool of thread for the bobbin onto the spool pin so that the thread unwinds to the front at the bottom and slide the spool cap onto the spool pin as far as possible. Hold the thread from the spool with both hands and pass the thread under the thread guide. Then pass the thread under the thread guide cover from the back to the front. Hold the thread with your right hand and use your left hand to feed it along the groove guide following the numbers. Make sure you feed the thread through the thread take-up lever from right to left. Hold the thread in your left hand and feed it through the needle holder thread guide with your right hand. Lower the presser foot. While slightly lowering the needle threader lever, hook the thread onto the guide. Fully lower the needle threader lever. The hook passes through the eye of the needle. Catch the thread onto the hook. Bring the needle threader lever slowly back in place and the hook will pull the thread through the eye of the needle. Draw the end of the thread from the needle's eye under the presser foot and pull about five centimeters, or two inches, of thread toward the rear of the machine. Now the upper threading is complete. Now let's start sewing. Turn the main power switch on. Make sure the utility stitch indicator lights up. Press the stitch selection keys under the liquid crystal display. Press the plus or minus keys to select the stitch number you want to sew. Pressing the keys on the right changes the digits on the right. And pressing the keys on the left changes the digits on the left. The presser foot to be used is indicated above the stitch number. In this case, use the J presser foot. Raise the needle by pressing the needle position button once or twice and raise the presser foot to set the fabric. Put the upper thread under the presser foot. While holding the thread and fabric with your left hand, turn the hand wheel toward you to lower the needle to the starting point for stitching and then lower the presser foot lever. Adjust the speed with the sewing speed controller and press the start stop button once to start sewing. After sewing, stop the machine by pressing the start stop button. Press the needle position button to raise the needle. Raise the presser foot, pull out the fabric, and then cut the threads with the thread cutter on the left side of the machine. Let's try reverse sewing. Lower the needle into the fabric where you wish to start stitching and lower the presser foot. 
start the machine slowly, and when you have sewn three to five stitches, stop the machine, press the reverse reinforcement stitch button, and hold it to sew reverse stitches until you return to the starting point. When you have returned to the starting point, take your finger off the reverse reinforcement stitch button and sew forward again. You can reverse sew for reinforcement at the end of sewing as well by stopping the machine and pressing the reverse reinforcement stitch button. This is how to stitch by using the mirror image stitches. Turn the power on, select mirror image stitch on the stitch category selection key. Select the mirror image stitch pattern on the panel and input the stitch pattern number. For models equipped with a flip chart, use the notch on the chart to flip, select a stitch pattern from the mirror image stitch, and input the stitch pattern number. Replace the presser foot to the one displayed on the liquid crystal display. Before replacing the presser foot, be sure to raise the needle by pressing the needle position button once or twice and turn off the power. Raise the presser foot lever. Press the button behind the presser foot holder to release the presser foot. Place the new presser foot below the holder so that the presser foot pin is aligned with the shank in the holder. Lower the presser foot lever to attach the presser foot. Now let's look at how to adjust the stitch length and width. You can adjust the stitch length as necessary. Make adjustments by pressing the plus or minus on the stitch length adjustment key. You can also adjust the stitch width of stitch patterns. Make adjustments by pressing the plus or minus on the stitch width adjustment key. After adjusting the stitch width, slowly turn the hand wheel toward you and check that the needle does not touch the presser foot. Now let's check the thread tension. This machine enables you to sew various types of fabric with the optimal thread tension. The tension of the thread depends on the type of fabric or thread. Try sewing with a piece of the fabric you are going to use and adjust the tension of the thread. Now let's finish the seams. Use the overcasting foot G to finish the seams. Turn on the power and select an overcasting stitch using the stitch selection keys. We'll select pattern 06 for now.
position the fabric with the edge of the fabric against the guide of the presser foot and lower the presser foot. Sew with the edge of the fabric along the presser foot guide. Now let's try hemming. Use the blind hem foot R to hem. Fold the fabric along the desired edge of the hem and then baste it about five millimeters or a quarter of an inch from the edge of the fabric. Turn on the power and select a hem stitch using the stitch selection keys. Draw the flat bed attachment to the left and remove it. Prepare the fabric with the wrong side facing up. Raise the presser foot and position the fabric so that the edge of the folded hem is aligned with the guide of the presser foot. Turn the hand wheel slowly toward you and check that the needle slightly catches the fold of the hem. Sew with the fold of the hem against the presser foot guide. Now let's sew a buttonhole. Use the buttonhole foot A for sewing buttonholes. Use Taylor's chalk to mark the position and length of the buttonhole on the fabric. With the button on the button guide plate, attach the buttonhole foot. Turn on the power and select a buttonhole stitch using the stitch selection keys. Pass the upper thread into the hole of the presser foot. Align the red mark on the presser foot with the front side of the marking on the fabric and lower the presser foot. Pull down the buttonhole lever as far as possible and position the lever behind the bracket on the buttonhole foot. Gently hold the end of the upper thread in your left hand, lower the needle into the fabric and start sewing. The machine will reinforce the stitching automatically before it stops. After sewing, raise the buttonhole lever back. Let's try character stitches. To stitch characters, use the N presser foot. Turn on the power, press the stitch category selection key and select the character stitch. For models equipped with a flip chart, use the notch on the chart to flip and select the desired character stitch. Let's stitch these characters. First, select 02 for B 
and press plus of the stitch width adjustment key to enter the desired number. Next, select 18 for R and enter the number. Select 15 for O and enter the number. Continue to enter all the character numbers in the same way. After entering all the character numbers, press plus or minus of the stitch length adjustment key to check the character numbers you have entered. You can also add characters after the characters you have entered. To add a character, select a character number and press plus on the stitch width adjustment key. To delete a character you have entered, press minus of the stitch width adjustment key. You can delete characters from the last ones. Set the fabric and start sewing. Finally, cut the crossover thread to finish character sewing. The set of characters you entered will be retained in the memory even if you turn off the power. Press minus on the stitch width adjustment key and delete the previously entered characters one by one before entering a new set of characters. Let's take a look at how to change the needle and clean the machine. Before replacing the needle, raise the needle by pressing the needle position button once or twice and turn off the power. Lower the presser foot. Hold the needle with your left hand. Loosen the needle clamp screw with the accessory screwdriver in your right hand and remove the needle. With the flat side of the new needle toward the rear of the machine, insert the needle until it touches the needle stopper. Hold the needle with your left hand and secure the needle clamp screw with the screwdriver. Make sure to turn off the power before cleaning the machine. Remove the presser foot, needle, and presser foot holder. Slide the needle plate cover, release on the upper left of the cover toward you to remove the needle plate cover. Grasp the bobbin case and pull it out. Use the accessory cleaning brush or vacuum cleaner to remove any dust from the race and its surrounding area. Return the bobbin case to its original position. Make sure that the projection of the bobbin case and the tension adjusting spring of the race are aligned. The Brother computerized sewing machine is designed with diverse useful functions. We hope you will enjoy sewing handmade pieces with your machine.